So in this figure, as you can see here now, this is explaining that concept of cross-link interference, which might cause in some scenarios if you have this kind of dynamic location in the network. Assuming now you have two different cells, cell one and cell two, and this cell one, and assume that within one slot, the gene will be decided to give this downlink allocations within this slot to be 12 downlink and one guard band and for example or one flexible and one uplink while the cell 2 decided to do the opposite way around to example to give one downlink one guard band and the remaining to be uplink so what will happen here this is for example a macro size near to each other or even within the same side what will happen here the downlink slots will be interfering in the uplink slots and the opposite way around because now we have different transmission for, and as you know the tdd now is like a kind of half duplex so you, uh, usually it should be you should be having only one transmission even for downlink and uplink within this uh, slot so the, in this case the frequency of the downlink the the downlink would be interfering with the uplink and this is my this is where the close link interference would come to the way. for example assume now you have this cell one which is a downlink centric slot transmitting downlink at this particular cell while the uplink here this one is using for uplink so this cell one will cause a, a cross lock interference as you can see this one transmitting downlink signal and the same one this one the user is transmitting uplink using the same frequency and as you know the power is much higher downlink so this can cause a severe interference in your uplink so this is actually one of the the things we need to take care of out of it so this can called cross link interference and this from point two this would be from bts to bts as you can see here the second one for example which is exactly the same concept but the opposite way around for example assume cell cell two now but this one is transmitting uplink right so here there is a transition of the uplink so this user will make an interference for the downlink which is being received by this particular user. So the uplink of this user will interfere with the downlink of this user. This also will have a big impact, but it's not like the downlink to uplink. So usually the uplink interference, this kind of post link interference, will be severely impacted. It will be severely impacted if you have this kind of, of scenario in the network. So that's why the dynamic configuration, we are more uh, recommending to be used, for example, in small cell indoor scenarios where you have less macrocytes, and the, for example, this is can be done on, only within one site or one cell where it can be more controlled and avoid this kind of scenarios. So this is what, the first case of cross link interference. <clears throat> the second case of cross link interference, it can be, for example, you can have a propagation delay for the slot. Let's assume that you have a static slot, all is being fixed between the source and target, but there is a propagation delay due to, for example, duct. So you can see again, this kind of scenarios where there is some shift in the signal. Assume that both of them was exactly the same, but because due to the duct and propagation delay, there this might be a, a delay in the in the frame. So this is can again cause cross interference, and this is can be mitigated or uh, uh, yeah mitigated through one uh, feature called remote interference management. I I did a trial for that part in 4G before and 5G as well, but at the 5G whenever I did it at that time, it was not mat that mature. So you might look into that if you have this kind of scenario for the humidity or the duct in general in your area. The next scenario actually, it's about, as you can see, for the same cross link interference, this is, can be operating whenever, assume now you have in your network a coexistence between the 4G and 5G. What it means? Assume that you have one side operating only with 4G, TDD frequency as an example, let's say 2.6 of band N41. And the 5G site as well as a neighbor operating with 5G using the exact same frequency as that one. Still the network is not continuous there. So for example, assume now you have the same frequency being shared by both of them, but for different sites. So in this case, you need to align exact the same configuration between the downlink and the link to avoid this kind of cross link interference. Now, for example, in the example maybe here, I see now the 4G here, as you can see, it's showing that you have here the configuration which is being fixed for for G which is three to one, the one for downlink, the three for downlink, and one for a special slot, and one for uplink, as you can see here. And now this is the configuration for that uh, pattern, static pattern for the the five G one, which is using eight to two. Eight to two means seven downlink, then one flexible, then two uplink. As you can see in this particular area, there is a cross link interference. So downlink is interfering on the uplink and the vice versa. So in this case, you need to be very careful whenever you are going to, uh, to, to make the configuration for the NR. So what you need to do either to shift this one by three milliseconds to make this one start from here, start, start from zero, the frame I mean, the frame is starting from zero millisecond, or you can shift the three millisecond, or you can change this configuration. So let me show you from, for example, instead of 8 to 2, to can make it 4 to 4. So let me show you the both example to explain it more. This is as a solution for the NR. 
So as you can see now, this is then RTLT coexistence. So in case this is a 4G, as you know, it's three to one, one downlink, uplink, suspicious load, then uplink, then two downlink, and it's basically every five milliseconds. So in, in this case, this was our scenario, the previous one, which is having 82. We just give a frame offset by three, uh, three, three milliseconds to make sure that this one will be exactly aligned with uh, the 4G. So this is shifting the frame by three milliseconds to make sure it's aligned. As you can see here now, downlink is falling with the downlink. This is, as you know, the the frame uh, here. Here, here is uh, the 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 duration is different because the SCS is using uh, 30 kilohertz and this 15 kilohertz. That's why you will have here the, within this one you will have 20 slots within the, within the so each subframe this one will be equivalent to two slots within the, the 5G network. So you can see here the the 4G is downlink. Now it's being equal to downlink and same for here and even for spacious slot part of it is downlink and the other part is for flexible and slot and here also need to align again the special pattern or special uh, slot uh, ssp special sub uh, uh, slot configuration as well but you can see also uplink is being aligned downlink is being aligned so this is a free solution can be shared by three milliseconds and using this eight to two the second one you can keep the exact no without zero frame offset but in this case you need to change this kind of pattern for example, here you need to give it as 4 to 4, and you need to configure now a dual period. For example, period 1 and period 2. 4 to, uh, 4, to 4. So, what you need, you need to do, so you give 4, uh, four which means 3 downlink, 1 flexible, and 1 and 2, two uplink, then it would be 4 downlink, then it will be repeated again. So, for example, this is, can be a configuration being configured. So, in this case, again, this would be completely aligned, as you can see. This There is no any misconfiguration between the uplink here. And again, within this flexible and downlink, you should be aligned, right? So, for example, this one here, the uh, special subframe is having 14 symbols, while this one will having a 28 symbols because if each slot will have a 28 and the slot is open in five milliseconds, while the subframe here is one millisecond. So, as you can see here, here this, uh, this uh, subframe having 14 milliseconds, uh, 14 symbols, one millisecond. So, this is equivalent to downlink and one flexible and the uh, the 4G side. As you know, this one, the first one will be all the 14 symbols will be for downlink. So, we have we don't have a problem. This one, one here, as you can see here, the first part for this part, we're using the, this settings. The 4G is using 10, so having having a 10. So if you configure here, the first 14 will be equivalent to that part. Then the second one, which is the second part here, from the fixed here, the first one here will be 14, which is being aligned with the first part of the 10. Then the second part of flexible here, for this one, this one you will be using 644 to align with this kind of configuration. So starting from this one, this will have one. Two, three, four, five, six, which is equivalent to three, and the same for the uplink and guard band as well. So now we have a complete alignment, and this is what it means by aligning the frame between the 4G and 5G. And this is mainly whenever you, you are using the same frequency for both of them. If you're using a different frequency, assume that you have 4G in, in uh, TDD 2.6 and you have NR in 3.7. So in this case, this case might not be really required.